As Congress continues its investigation into the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump, the FBI Director, Christopher Wray, testified before the House Judiciary Committee yesterday, and he revealed, now catch this, he revealed that the shooter, Thomas Matthew Crooks, flew a drone near the event site just hours before the shooting. He also revealed that uh, Crooks also possessed multiple explosive devices. Amazing. What else did Christopher Wray reveal? And how much confidence do House Republicans have in the FBI's ongoing investigation? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Andy Biggs. He serves on that important committee, the Judiciary Committee, as well as the House Oversight Committee. He represents the 5th Congressional District of Arizona. Congressman Biggs, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to see you. Great to see you, Jody. Good to be with you. Well, listen, I got to tell you before we jump into this, I saw you uh, on television yesterday with the uh, joint sessions where uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu spoke and you and several colleagues around you. It just made me smile and miss you all. And uh, please send my love to each of them. I will. And we miss you, Jody. We do. Well, thank you. All right, let's jump into this. I, uh, I, I guess no pun intended, but I'll throw it out here. There were a number of explosive details, I'll put it that way, uh, that uh, FBI Director Christopher Wray revealed in his testimony yesterday. Tell me some of your thoughts from that hearing. Well, he revealed to us uh, that the shooter had a collapsible stock gun. That had never been revealed publicly, and that may have been how he got his gun up there where nobody could see it. We still don't know whether he carried the gun up or whether it was placed before the uh, event because Christopher Ray, Director Ray, confirmed that he had been at the scene at least twice prior to the shooting. Obviously, it seems to us that the, the shooter was casing the place. Uh, and one of those times, he had a drone, and that drone, uh, he ran for 11 minutes, live streamed what he was seeing. He took it back uh, behind where he was going to shoot President Trump from. Uh, so he could uh, basically look to me like he would have been scoping that out. We don't have actual video because he live streamed it and didn't save it. Uh, the, uh, just some other things that are important. The explosives, there were a total of three explosives. One, uh, he left at home, two in his car. And he had a transmitter device on his person when he was killed. The receivers for those two bombs, according to Christopher Ray, um, were not turned on, so they could not have been. Uh, he, he, they could not have received the signal to explode uh, because the signals had not themselves had not been turned on. So I, I, there's a lot there. Uh, the he was focusing primarily on the shooter. That's the area of FBI's investigation. He, he revealed to us also the other investigations that are going on as well. So there's multiple investigations going on, Jody. As well as the one right there in Congress that you're involved with. Uh, do you think that the FBI really has a handle on the, how this shooting was allowed to take place in the first place? They they kind of punted. They said that that's not their their role. They they gave that to the DA, uh, Department of Homeland Security Inspector General, which is uh, a guy named Joseph Kafari, uh, which oddly enough the Biden administration is trying to terminate from his employment. Although Kafari's done a really good job inspecting what goes on on the border, it would be a terrible mistake to get rid of the investigator who's already opened up the investigation on this. But that's. Your question, I'm, I'm dodging your question. Your question is, do we have faith in the FBI? And there's a lot of reasons um, to believe that we really need to double check everything that the FBI is doing right now. Yeah, there there really is. I mean, all of us, we've watched the FBI in recent years uh, massively take their focus off of their, their main task. I mean, it seems like they've placed a greater emphasis on seniors praying at abortion facilities and going after parishioners at Catholic churches. Uh, and so I, I think it's a question that everyone is has in their mind. Uh, you know, when, when you look at this, uh, Congressman Biggs, I, 
Did he give any indication that there may have been others involved? Did he give any indication that uh, as to why President Trump was not taken off the stage or why the, the, the sh our snipers were told to stand down or whatever took place to wait until the potential assassin takes a first shot? Is anything along those lines? No, uh, no to all those questions. So, so um, I've been asking, I know Thomas Massey asked yesterday, uh, was there, have you found anybody uh, that who was an accessory, who was uh, facilitating this? And uh, he said, no. We asked him about why wasn't there, why wasn't the, they, th that is to say, they haven't found evidence. He's not saying that there wasn't. He's just said they haven't found evidence yet. Second thing is on the, on the, um, uh, the hold. Now, you and I, anybody who's been with a president or, or a dignitary will know that that Secret Service will tell you there's a there's a hold. You have to hold here for a minute. Maybe you're holding for five minutes. Maybe you're holding for 10 until they examine and check something. He did not give us that. He said that is in the purview of the DHS IG inspector general. So he said we, we're just focusing. He said FBI is just focusing on the shooter. Um, so. Uh, you asked him multiple questions, but there was no to any of those questions. He, he, the only one he gave a concrete answer was was the uh, uh, accessory to the crime, and he said, we just don't have the evidence yet to determine that. They Just so you know, Jody, and everybody needs to be aware, they have found multiple um, uh, you know, devices like a cell phone and computer, et cetera, and they are reverse engineering. They're, they're, they're busting through all those. Uh, trying to hack him, and they're they're encrypted, um, and they want to find out who he was talking to, and we just don't have all that information yet, or at least they didn't reveal that to us yet, and uh, we want to get that information for sure. We we do, and all his social media posts, amazing how much has not become public, uh, is, is startling, and, and and I'll just say this, and I I think you're on to this, but I think a lot of Conservatives in Congress think it's a victory that uh, Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle has uh, resigned. She's no longer be. But there's so much more yet to uncover in this investigation, and I certainly hope that that will continue. If I can switch topics, our time is getting away. Uh, but, of course, uh, President Biden spoke from the Oval Office last night regarding his decision to step down as a presidential candidate. Uh, what did you make of the speech? Uh, you know, it certainly wasn't a uh, high marker for telling the truth. But what do you think of the speech? So uh, let's I'm going to confess to you, I had something else to do rather than watch it live last night. So I was flossing my teeth. OK, so that's I think that's important <laughs> to know, Jody. Um, the reality is, uh, as I've gone back and looked at what he said, I it just <laughs> my impressions are the same as everyone else. It just confirmed that he cannot run and lead this country, right? I mean, that's really the bottom line here. And we've known it, you've known it for for three years that he is not running this country, that there's some kind of oligarchy there that's running the country. And so he needs to go. And and um, and then at the same time, he needs to go. You get the massive cover up and, and, why, uh, and cleaning up of the image of, of Kamala Harris, who is, uh, bungled everything that she's in, been put in charge of, you know, like the border. She was the border czar, Jody. That's what they called her. Everybody called her that. Okay, and if you don't like border czar, uh, she was appointed to lead the border effort. She was the manager. She was the director, whatever you want to call it. The bottom line is still the same. She failed. And Joe Biden uh, stuck with her. And, uh, you know, I, I think Joe Biden... If he can't run for office, he can't be the president, he's staying the president, then, then he should stay in office. You know, there's so much going on that's bizarre about that whole thing, Jody. Yeah, well, it's evident that he's not fit to run again, but it is also evident he's not fit to run the country. I mean, he just simply is not mentally capable of doing so, particularly at the uh, stage that we are globally and with our own country. So many massive problems to deal with. And I, if, I agree with you. If he can't be a candidate, he, neither should he be the president. America cannot go six months without a president. Congressman Andy Biggs, always an honor to talk with you. Thanks for coming on Washington Watch. My pleasure, Jody. Let's do it again.